Paul Violas joins me now. He is the CEO of Violas Group International. Thanks so much for being here. My pleasure, Vlad. All right. So what a tale of two cities. No right? question. Uh, let's talk about this decision to indict this officer in right. the case in Tulsa, Oklahoma. What do you make of that? I think they had to do it. There's no question about it. And the reason why is because when you take a look at police procedure and the law and how those are two are going to be married on this situation, she was forced with a situation of exercising deadly physical force, which was not warranted. And thanks to the videotape, it clearly proved that he was not armed. So clearly, there is no question about it. They had to go ahead and indict her and the charge being correct on manslaughter because what she did was clearly unwarranted. There was no reason to exercise deadly physical force. All right, Paul, you've had a long career in law enforcement. Um, there's a lot of people in the African-American community who feel that if this tape did not exist, that officer could say that she was in fear <laughs> of her life right. and she would not be in the situation that she finds herself in today. How much validity can you give to the African-American community when they say that happens time and time again? hundred percent. You can't deny the empirical data. You can't hide behind anything when it comes to that. That's a legitimate concern because absent that videotape, what you would have is the testimony of one officer and three other officers. Mm. Now, what do we, Vlad, what does that remind you of? That's Baltimore. Yeah, right. Right? You got a guy in Baltimore who died from a crushed voice box in a truck. Really? Yeah. Now, if there was a videotape there, that would have been different. Those cops walked. We know that. She's not going to walk because of the videotape, because it showed she was wrong. Listen, if a cop does the wrong thing, no good cop, Vlad, will ever support a bad cop. Mm. And that's... And, and we should point out that she's innocent until proven guilty. But one of the other interesting facets of this case is that her fellow police officer pulled his taser when he was confronted with Mr. Crutchers, and she pulled her, her revolver. Give us a sense of police procedure. What is... It, I, I'm just trying Great to understand question. why he would pull a taser and she'd pull her, her, her gun. It's an excellent question. So let's talk about really the benchmark of that, Vlad. It's called the, the use of force continuum. And that's what police officers all over the country are taught from verbal commands to the use of deadly physical force. The taser is what's referred to as an impact weapon. So I don't have to go to actual deadly force by using a firearm if I can subdue the individual without using lethal force. The taser in that case was clearly the right way to go. Prior to that, if you think of the genesis of impact weapons, the nightstick, the PR-24, the ASP, things like that. The taser is a really solid impact weapon. It doesn't hurt the human being, and it, it, it ensures that you don't have to use deadly physical force. So the officer that went to the impact weapon was the right choice. The officer that went to exercise deadly physical force in this case, wrong choice, not just. Mm. When do you expect that she will turn herself in? That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, she's going to be represented by either the FOP or the PBA. Mm. And they're obviously in negotiations with, with the DA's office of how that's going to work. But her defense attorney is going to have a very difficult time defending her with respect to what you just mentioned, that videotape. Videotape's not going to lie in that case. I also, uh, the question that a lot of people have is police unions. They generally come out from the very beginning and say the officer was right. We have to trust the officer. Um, and understanding, I mean, we've been talking about what happened here in New York City over the weekend. Right. These officers running to the scene of where there may have been another explosive device. Uh, everybody running the other way. These officers running to that scene right. to try to figure out what was going on. Um, and so there's a lot of bravery and, and courageousness that goes into the job. But this idea that police unions generally come out and say, look, the officer's always right, the perp is always wrong. Wrong. Is, and, and we can't take that. And the reason why that's wrong for the police unions to take, and I was a part of the FOP when I was on the job, the reason why is because you lose credibility, Brad. Right. You have no validity there. Cops are not always right. Look, we have 1.2 million police officers in the United States. And, and, and the fact is about 1% misrepresent the badge. But you don't get a pass. Police officers are held to a higher standard. Constitutionally, that's why we have the fighting words doctrine, right? We're held to a higher standard. So there, it, it really diffuses, it, it, it accelerates right. the, 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 the argument, if you will, of why police are not being taken seriously and given respect right now. Because if you jump to the plate automatically and say, listen, I got to defend the cop, any good cop is going to look at that and say, yeah, that's no good. All right. Uh, fascinating discussion. Uh, Paul Violas, thank you so much for being with it's us. A pleasure. Thanks for that.